Hey everyone, uh, Path to Eternity here. Uh, just wanted to make a quick video to show you how to use a C token in Gina. Uh, the C token is the character that searches for your character's name uh, or prints or says it uh, in a trigger or a timer. Uh, I'll try to make this quick, uh, just a little tutorial for you. Uh, to show you what I've got here, I've got uh, one character log in, logged into the test server. This is a druid and I have got a shaman logged in as well and of course I have Gina open. Uh, the reason that I've been digging into these C tokens in my own triggers is that uh, for years I've really just played a single character and when something happens and my trigger says you I know that it's referring to my main character because that's the only guy that I'm playing. But with Rizlona coming out here in a couple of days I plan to be playing a couple of boxes and I need to know which box a trigger is referring to. And the best way to do that is with the C token. So we're going to take a look at that here. I'm going to take one of my pre-existing triggers and I'm going to modify it to help me track my boxes. And then since I'm playing a couple of boxes, we're going to write a trigger right from scratch uh, that will be useful in a boxing situation that maybe we wouldn't use if we were just playing a single character. Uh, if you want to get logged in to EQ, maybe into a couple of characters and fire up Gina to follow alongside and practice yourself, I think that would be great. Uh, I'm going to dive right into this right now though. So the trigger that I'm going to modify is this you appear trigger. And if you're familiar with this text, you probably know that this is the text that you get when Invis has dropped. Um, this is not what you want in the middle of a raid and in many dungeons this can be problematic as well. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, when Invis drops an EverQuest, your character gets a little message that says you appear. And so I am searching for that string. Uh, the way that I have this trigger named is that it's just called the same as the search text. And when one of my characters appears, um, I have it set to display that line of text. And I have an L token here, which is an L in curly brackets. And so when Gina detects this you appear message it prints on my screen you appear in my text overlay and I have text to speech uh, that will say the line of text as well now for the L token it's just gonna read L uh, which is not super useful but we can test it in game I'm gonna switch over to my druid here I'm gonna target myself I'm gonna cast superior camouflage and then I'm going to click it off myself to force the trigger. Now that was great and that was more than enough when I was playing just a single character but now if I'm going to be running several boxes and invis breaks on one of my boxes I really need to know which one and I'm going to show you how to do that. So here what I'm going to do uh, just to make this simple is I'm going to copy the search text and I'm just going to paste it in my display text and in my text to say. I'm going to remove this U, all of this here. I'm going to put this C token right here. I'm going to fix my grammar by putting an S at the end. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it right here also. So it will use my character's name and print that on the screen and say it out loud. We're going to save that trigger. Switch back over to the Druid. I'm still targeted. I'm going to recast Superior Camouflage on myself. And now we're going to break our invis and watch this track a, a little bit better. So that's what I need to know when I'm playing a different character, which character did the invis break on. Uh, now let's switch back over to Gina and we will create a trigger from scratch. Uh, this is a great exercise if you're used to borrowing other people's triggers and never writing your own. Uh, this is a great time to write one for the first time. So I'm going to right click here on my group and I'm going to select add trigger. Uh, the tri I'm going to again use the trigger name as the search text uh, the exact same um, but something that I didn't really worry about as much when I was playing a single character was auto follow but now I'm gonna have a bunch of boxes following my main around and I need to know if auto follow breaks so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow I'm gonna type slash follow alchemy cost here and now it says that I'm auto following and then if I turn left or right 
it breaks. And it says, you are no longer auto following alchemy cost. So that's the line of text that I want to be looking for. I'm going to switch back over to Gina and I'm going to put, you are no longer auto following. Now I'm not going to put alchemy cost here because that's not going to be the name of my main on Rizlona. And I might be auto following another character, a friend of mine or whatever. And if you use these triggers, you're not going to be using these names either. So what I'm going to use is an S token, which is an S with curly brackets around it. And that just searches for a string of text. And in our case here, that's going to be a character name. Uh, this caret here prevents uh, other people from uh, firing your triggers and messing with you. Uh, so if a bunch of you are sitting around and you've used my triggers, uh, they won't be able to do emotes and things to make your triggers fire. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it right here. I'm going to use fast check. Use regular expressions automatically checks because we've got the caret in here and we've got the token in here and these are regular expressions. Uh, for the display text, because I want this to pop up on my screen if one of my characters uh, stops following, uh, I'm just going to paste that right there and I'm going to do text to speech also. I'm going to paste that right there. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit because I don't want it to say you. I want it to say my character's name. So I'm going to put the C token. And since I'm a grammar Nazi, I'm going to change R to is to make this a normal sentence. Character is no longer auto following. And then it's going to tell me the name of the character that auto follow broke on. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste this. I'm going to save this trigger. I'm going to switch back over to the Druid. I'm going to follow Alchemy Cost. I'm going to switch over to Alchemy Cost. I'm going to make sure that Spirit of Wolf is still running on him. It is, so I'm running faster. And then we're here in uh, Steam Fought Mountains, and we're going to take off. We're going to make sure that we've got a nice long stretch here, uh, long enough to lose somebody without Spirit of Wolf. And we're just going to run around a little bit. We can rotate our camera back and let's see if we can, let's see if we can lose them. And there we go. Didn't take very long, uh, but we see the text pop up right on the screen. And of course you heard the audio trigger. And this is what I'm planning to use so that I know if my boxes fall off of my main. Uh, I highly encourage you to play around with this a little bit. Uh, if you have some interesting use cases that you've come across for using a C token or any of the other tokens that we've mentioned, the L token or the S token, uh, there's others, uh, leave that in the comments. Uh, if you have a neat idea that you'd like to try out, I'd like to hear about it. And of course, if you have any questions, uh, leave those in the comments too, and I'll be happy to ask. Uh, if you're having a little trouble with some triggers, um, I'm always interested in helping out with those. But I hope that this was helpful for you. I uh, hope that you can take some of these uh, ideas and incorporate them into your own triggers. And I hope that I hear, hope that I hear what you're doing with this. So once again, uh, thanks for watching and uh, like this video if you like what you saw here and uh, subscribe if you're interested in seeing more content like this. Thank you.